Splash, ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Icon back with some DC TV as we attempt to get caught up on all this DC TV. This is episode six of The Flash season eight, Impulsive Excessive Disorder. And it, like honestly, between the Armageddon crossover and then now this particular episode, which was based around the kids and had nothing to do with the actual Team Flash, I kind of feel like, it doesn't feel like the season started yet. <laughs> like it, it legitimately doesn't feel like, like next week, well, the, the, the next episode for The Flash, it's actually gonna be The Flash, they're gonna take down a villain of the week, and I feel like, th that, I feel like episode seven is when the season will actually start. But like now, it just feels like we're doing just like preludes, you know, like, like going up to the season. But this was still a fun episode because I love I love Impulse, <laughs> you know, like I love me some Nora, and like like I'm a huge fan of the Flash Kids, and let's see what sort of hijinks that they get into because you know there's gonna be some as we go into this particular episode. So again, so this is episode six, and the episode starts where the season ended, or the Armageddon season ended last time with Barry and Iris, you know, having their wedding vows, their renewals, and their kisses, and you know all this other you know gushy goodness. And then you know after that, the Nora and Bart they go back to their timeline and when they go back to their timeline you know things are like things appear to be the same but they're different at the same time they were in the flash museum and while they were in the flash museum like a big green wave like a temporal wave came over them and then when the temporal wave came over them they immediately knew something happened and something had changed because jay garrick's you know helmet was sitting there in the flash museum and when his helmet then when the temporal wave came in the helmet disappeared so then nora you know like she's the genius of the two of them so well at least the, she's the mature one of the two of them which is crazy because she completely wasn't in her season but she's the one that that you know that figured out the whole you know like the whole deal that something in the timeline had changed they ended up going home and then when they went home Jay Garrick showed up now in the last season in their timeline Jay Garrick died at the hands of Zoom which is why Bart was the adversary and why you know he was all upset and everything but now Jay Garrick is back so both kids embrace him they hug him they're like oh my god Uncle Jay you know like you're back and everything and then he's like what's gotten into you kids and then you know while they're talking to him and everything then he mentions that you know Iris and Barry they went away on their honeymoon but then he also talked about you know your Aunt Rose wishes you kids you know like you know like well whatever she sends her love and then both of them turn and look at her like who the fuck is Aunt Rose <laughs> because it was supposed to be Aunt Joan like you know like Barry's mom you know Aunt Joan was supposed to be you know like their aunt and then she was just like he was like what happened <laughs> he's like so now the two of them know something's wrong so they go back to the Flash Museum they start scrolling through you know because I guess like Barry had built a machine that alerts you when, whenever there are changes made to the timeline. And it's weird because they call the thing Gideon, and I'm just like, we have a Gideon on the Wave Rider, and I'm still waiting for somebody to make the comparison between both Gideons. Like, was Barry, like, did Barry Allen create the Gideon or the model of the Gideon that the legends have now because you know that Gideon's from the future. They never made that comparison after all these years and I always thought that was weird. Why Barry has a Gideon on his wrist and then there's a Gideon flying the ship on Legends of Tomorrow. Anyway, so while they're scrolling through the thing, they see like um, some mayor junior, you know, he's corrupt or whatever, he's in trouble. And then they see Booster Gold. That, 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 that actually made me laugh because in the Legends season finale, we met Booster Gold. So Booster Gold met the president and then, and, the, and I guess that was something that changed changed in the timeline too because when they saw the the newspaper article with booster gold like nora was dead ass like who the hell is booster gold so, so i don't think you know he was he's probably like a new add to the timeline but i want to see booster gold in legend season eight so then you know so then after that like they keep scrolling they find out that joe west got shot back in 19 well 2014 while barry was in his coma and they said that he was the chief of police then and that wasn't supposed to happen. He wasn't supposed to be chief of police then, so they knew right then and there that's what the change was. Joe getting shot, you know, was what caused that riffle in the timeline. So they end up going back to 2014 to try to set that whole thing right. While they're there, they get to GCPD, they pose as interns at the GCPD, but while they're at the GCPD, we saw the interaction between um, Cecile and Joe when Joe Joe actually did try to talk to her at one point and because she was just going through her divorce she shot him down you know what I'm saying? she shot him down like duck hunting and you know that was that was pretty funny and then you know after that like they were trying to figure out okay we need to follow him around all day and we need to intercept the moment where he gets shot but then while they were trying to sneak around and like follow Joe then Eddie of all people like Eddie Thon showed up and he rolled up on Nora and Bart and it was good to see Eddie back you know because again 
this is when Eddie had just joined the force and he just became, you know, Joe's partner because remember Joe's original partner died when the particle accelerator went off and, you know, Joe was giving him the cold soul shoulder and then Nora and Bart, they said that they were the interns to replace Barry because Barry was in the coma and then that's when Eddie decided to give them, you know, his credit card and to buy coffee for the entire police department because he was trying to kiss Joe's behind and getting good with Joe. So then Nora got mad at him because she was just like, you know, we're here to follow Joe. We're not here to get coffee. And any single thing that they do now disrupts the timeline. Like them just leaving the police station can have, you know, like ripple effects on, on space and time. So they go to Jitter, they go to a Jitter's push cart. And I'm like, I thought Jitter's actually had a building back then, but they, they go to a Jitter's push cart and they're trying to get coffee from the push cart. And then while, you know, and then like Bart's whole thing was, he was just like, oh, why is this taking so long? Why can't I just speed get the coffee? And then she's like, you can't use your speed because we're not supposed to be here. And then he swings his arms in there because he was like, I'm frustrated, you know, because he's impulsive. He's like, I'm frustrated. I want to get this coffee and then he ends up knocking this girl behind him like the papers out of her hand he picks up her papers you know the two of them you know embrace and make eye contact and it's love at first sight or whatever and he hasn't realized yet that in his timeline she's probably 50 <laughs> and, you know but they make eye contact and then he starts looking at her papers and see that the girl's name is Avery but he sees that she's a fan well she's studying she's looking into quantum entanglements and she's looking into time travel basically and he knows about time travel so they talk they communicated on that level and you know they were falling more for each other and then what go back and watch the scene where Bart and Avery are like conversing and like you know talking to each other Nora's in the background losing her complete shit <laughs> and like her her background reactions to that conversation I thought was awesome, which is something that Candace Patton, Iris West does very well. If you watch any episodes of The Flash and everything, when two people are having a conversation, Iris's background reactions always steal the show. So, you know, so then Nora got the call that something was happening at the GCPD where Joe, S Joe ended up going down to investigate. So they go down there, you know, you know, Bart says bye to the girl. They go down to see about the robbery. Joe is at the robbery some guy that comes out that only takes the eth the ethnically sourced non <laughs> like non blood diamonds he, he ends up stealing a bunch of jewelry and a bunch of diamonds joe's got him at gunpoint but the guy's not really a criminal as a matter of fact he's actually never really held a gun before and the gun was so heavy he dropped it and when he dropped the gun the gun went off and that was the bullet that was supposed to shoot joe and when when nora and bart got there the bullet was already on its way to joe so Nora was just like in the heat of the moment, Nora was just like, you know, let me figure this out. I got to try to figure out, you know, what to do, how to stop it. You know, she was just like, you know, we, this, we have to be precise about it. And then Impulse was just like, you know what, screw this. And then he just ran in and then he grabbed Joe and he pushed Joe out of the way. And then the bullet, the bullet went through the windshield. And then after that, Joe didn't get shot. They ended up stopping the guy, you know, and they arrested him and then they walked away. So now they're thinking like, okay, we did a good thing. And then Nora was like, no, you didn't do a good thing because she said, because you moved Joe, and you didn't stop the bullet. She said, if anything, you were supposed to stop the bullet. But because you didn't stop the bullet, wherever that bullet landed could have, you know, could also have ripple effects on time as well. And then, you know, as they're walking away and arguing about it, we we get we get introduced to the origin of the Royal Flush Gang. Because the girl that plays the queen, she had just got hit with the particle accelerator and she has the ability to read people's minds she heard the conversation between Bart and Nora and then between them saying like metahumans and the particle accelerator and then she was looking at the bullet that was shot into the you know shot into the wall and then she was just like wow there are more people like me so she ends up recruiting like three other people to you know to become her royal flesh gang and their goal is on New Year's Eve, they're gonna rob a casino. Now, like early season one, The Flash even said that the Royal Flush Gang was the very first metahuman criminals, but they were the ones who got away because Barry was in the coma at the time. And I believe in that newspaper article, they did rob a casino. So them robbing a casino is actually very important to the timeline. But the thing about it is, now because of Bart and Nora, they're the reasons why she had the idea to rob the casino because they told her about metahumans, which is, made, which, is, which is what made her put together the Royal Flush Gang to begin with. But the difference was, the change in everything was, when they looked at the article and they saw that the Royal Flush Gang you know, was still supposed to rob the, rob the casino, the, there was a body count of people who died. 
and that number kept switching and changing and going back and forth. And now Bart's upset because he's like, I'm a failure. He's like, I let, you know, I let my team down. He's like, I let my family down. And then he runs off and he goes to the hospital where his daddy is, where his dad's still in a coma. And then he apologizes to his dad for being a failure. Nora talks him out of it. You know, she's just like, you know, you'll be a good speedster one day. You already are. And then they hug and they embrace and he starts crying. And then he starts thinking, he was just like, well, in order for us to fix this, um, you know, this, this situation with the Royal Flesh Gang, he said, let's talk to someone who's an expert in time travel. So they go find Avery. And, you know, and I feel like Avery's going to be important going forward. Like, this is not the first, like, this isn't the first time, this isn't the last time we're going to see Avery. And when we do see Avery again, it's, we're probably going to be in 2049. Like, this, like, 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 mark my words, I'm calling this now. There's going to be an episode where Bart goes back to our present. He's interacting with Avery, her and Avery are like kissing and hugging and making out and all this other stuff. And then like in the season finale or some at some point before the season ends, he's going to go back to 2049. Avery's going to find him at Star Labs and she's going to be mad old. So, <laughs> so, you know, so then so, so they end up going to Avery. And then, you know, Avery freaked out because she was like, how did you, she's because she was like, you're spies. How'd you get into Star Labs? And they were just like, no, we're time travelers. We're actually from the future. And then they show her like the newspaper article. And because, you know, time travel's her thing, you know, because she's a master of time travel, because she's been studying time travel, she noticed, she said that the reason why the newspaper article is still the same, but it's the numbers that keep moving. And if you watch Legends of Tomorrow, you know this term, the Royal Flush Gang robbing that casino is a fixed point in time. Which means if the Royal Flush Gang's robbery is a fixed point in time, that means there's a fixer that, that has been charged with the responsibility of protecting that specific timeline event. And if we get a fixer for that moment, that'd actually be pretty cool. So, you know, but anyway, she said that because it's a fixed point in time, it's a moment in time that can't be changed. She said the numbers of the people, that keeps changing because you can save all the people you can stop the building from exploding. You can stop the Royal Flush Gang from, from taking innocent lives. But in order for you to do that, you have to allow the robbery to take place. So you're basically now asking two superheroes to let these criminals pull off a robbery. But it is for the greater good because you are saving, you are saving the people that are inside. So they go down there, you know, they go to stop the Royal Flush Gang. Bart tries to like, you know, super swoosh. And that was weird to me because when that, whenever there are people in in the room or whatever, and there are people that are being held under gunpoint, the Flash just speeds in, speeds in, speeds in, and just removes everybody in under three seconds. Bart was moving these people out of there so damn slow, and I'm just like, bro, like your dad would have cleared the room, <laughs> you know, like like in like ten seconds. Why is it taking you fifty years to get these people out of the building? But anyway, so you know, but then like the Queen, like, she knew he was there, and then he tried to talk her down, and then she read his mind, and then she was like, oh, you're from the future, and then she was like, oh, you're also a cop. He used his speed thinking, I guess. He was talking about the girl that he liked, and then I guess she felt when he was talking about the future, he meant the future with the girl. So she kind of like was just like, oh, maybe you're not from the future. She was just like, you're, you're young. You were just talking about a girl. But she was like, I still think you're a cop. And then, you know, like she used like the ace to, you know, to knock him out, knock him clear across the room, which Bart didn't really put up a fight for because one, he wasn't that strong enough to beat ace. And two, he has to let the, you know, like let the heist go off because he even told them. He said, listen, he was like, just spare these people's lives and I'll just turn my back and I'll just let you get out of here with all the diamonds and everything. So they ended up leaving, you know, like the Royal Flush Gang. They pulled off their heist. They succeeded in that regard. They got their 10 million dollars and then they bounced um nora she ended up finding all the bombs she got excessive she found all the bombs she threw them up into the air right before they exploded and nora and nora and bart saved all the people on new year's day so now they're feeling happy because you know they changed everything like they fixed they, they hopefully fixed the timeline they're back at gcpd because everybody's celebrating new year's eve we actually see the original iris and the way they did her outfit and her makeup they made her look like she did back in season one. And God damn, I forgot how fine that woman was <laughs> back then. But anyway, they showed the meeting where um, where Iris and, and um, Eddie met for the first time. And that has to be awkward for the kids because it's like, damn, that could have been your daddy. But, you know, but but that wasn't that ended up not being the case. You know, so then so then after that, so then the two of them, like, you know, that's when they ended up leaving. But then right before they left, the entire police department decided to take a picture on New Year's Day, and you know Bart, they they were like, oh interns, why don't you guys get in on the picture? And then you know then Bart was just like, yay, and then Nora was like, nah, <laughs> she was like, nah. But then they ended up taking the picture, and that was the picture that we saw. 
at the end, I believe it was Armageddon. Was it Flash Armageddon? We saw the picture at the end of Armageddon with Bart and Nora in the background of the photo. So then Bart and Nora, they go back to the, you know, to their their present. You know, they they go back to their present. And then once they go back to their present, you know, Uncle Jay shows up. They tell they tell Garrick about what they did. And then, you know, he was just like, oh, I'm happy to have my Joan back. And then Bart was just like, I'm sorry, Uncle Jay. He was like, I ruined everything. And he was like, I'm not going to be a good speedster. And then Jay Garrick started busting out laughing because he was like, bro, your daddy fucks that shit up all the time. <laughs> he's, he's like, if you want to talk to somebody about the repercussions of ruining lives and messing up time travel and this, that, and the third, go talk to John Diggle. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, so he was just like, you know, don't worry about it. He said, we all made mistakes. And this was important because Jay Garrick said that when he first discovered time travel, he said he spent 16 years in the past. And I was like, he's talking about the JSA. He was like, I spent 16 years in the past. And he said, going back and forth between the past and the present, they were talking about the JSA. And it's crazy because when he was on, because like if you watch Stargirl, he popped up in the JSA on Stargirl. So that was actually, that wasn't Jay Garrick actually living in that time period. He was just traveling through time from his time period and he was just messing with the JSA. So that was actually a pretty cool nod because he was on Stargirl like, <laughs> like this past season as Jay Garrick. So that, that was it. And then, you know, he ended up leaving and then he, he made a joke about President Luthor and I thought that was awesome. We need Lex Luthor on Superman and Lois. And then he left and then the kids went, you know, the kids went back to normal and everything's perfectly fine. And then in the end, it takes us to a scene where we're now in present day. You know, everybody's talking about now that Armageddon's over. They were just like the whole team flash. They're headed to Paris, you know, I guess to have like a relaxing dinner. And, you know, like Cecile's all excited. And then um, Caitlin wasn't there because she they said that she has a new boyfriend, which was the guy that Alex from Supergirl had mentioned to her during the Armageddon crossover. Because there was a guy because when they were talking about it, Alex had said to Caitlin, she said, I'm, I'm going to get you in touch with a science friend of mine. And he should be able to, you know, like to help you with, with the problem that you have. And then she told Caitlin, she was like, I think you'll really like him. And now the two of them are dating. So that was, like, it's just like the subtle things. You got to catch like the subtle things because they end up, they do end up paying off later. Iris had came downstairs looking good as always. And she had this dress on and everything, but she had a brush. She put the brush down on, on the couch. And then when Barry sped everybody out of the room, the brush turned into green particles and then the brush, disappe the brush disappeared. And... We are now entering the moment where Iris gets the time suit because I said there is a comic where Iris West Allen does get a time suit and it'd be cool if Iris gets the time suit this season. It'd be cool if there's an episode where she teams up with Booster Gold. And because and, the reason why the, the brush turned into green particles, because that's Dion and the Still Force. And with the Still Force, you know, the whole thing about the Still Force is, you know, it's the whole thing about like time particles, space time and all this other hoopla. But Iris was affected by it due to the mirror thing. I guess it was the mirror situation that she went through. It affected her because she was like traveling, like fluctuating, like in and out of time. But Dion was the one that was stabilizing her. And all the energy and everything that Dion did to stabilize her, he undid it. When he undid it during the crossover because Iris wanted him to undo it so she could better see what was going on. And then when he undid it, that's when she saw the time particles in the air and realized that the reverse flash was the one who actually killed Joe. So now Dion removed all that still force energy in her. So now she's going back to, you know, fluctuating through time. So yeah, this season's going to be based on Iris getting the time suit. And he's like, and I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that, especially if it's tight fitting. So that, <laughs> that was it. In the next episode, it's all about the gold gold member gold finger whatever the gold dude the black dude the gold dude is back um can't wait to see bart and nora pop up again and you know so we're we're, we're, we're ready to start the season of the flash the flash season is we're we're now gonna start and i'm definitely here for it as we continue to speed forward so that was it and thank you for tuning in so share your thoughts questions comments and or concerns down below let me know what you thought about the flash let me know what you about this particular episode are you excited about the season are you excited about iris getting the time suit and where we go from here. Check me out on Twitter and Instagram, always on YouTube, where you can put your comments down below. And like I said, in this, we'll continue the conversation. We'll continue everything with everybody because I try to get to all, you know, the, the, the reviews and all the comments as quickly as I possibly can. And while I try to catch up on my DC TV because I'm going on vacation soon, I still got Superman coming up and I still got Naomi. So thanks for tuning in, guys. So until next week, for The Flash, take care. I'll be back in The Flash. And I'm up to the... <laughs>